Hey, good news. We have a new episode of the Azure Enabling Show where we're talking to an expert about your questions. This time we're asking a question about security. Too many people have access to production. What are you going to do about it? Join us here on the Azure Enablement Show. Hey, welcome to another episode of the Azure Enablement Show. Again, we're back with a cloud clinic to get your questions answered. So let me bring on our expert, Magnus. Hey, Magnus, how are you doing? How are you doing? Yeah, it's all good. Good over here. Let's get so going. We, we have a doozy for a question. In fact, this question, I think, is so important and so large. I want to break it down, and we might do this as two episodes because this is, like, okay. super, super important, but also something we can get into real depth about. So, all right. I'm um, excited. Okay, so we have this message from we have this message that we got from Pablo, who is in Hamburg, and Pablo is saying that. Um, uh, well, this is I'm just going to read it. He says our security officer just flagged that too many people have access to production environments and is not compliant with their security audit, which tends to be pretty strict. There is my understanding. What should we do? So I think there are two problems in here that I'm hoping that we can sort of tease apart. And let's do the first two. Let's do the first one first. The first question is, like, why is this such a problem? We need to really highlight that. And, and how do we determine who actually has access? And then for the second part, we'll talk about how to, how to really get in there and fix it. So let, let's start off with why what Pablo is identifying is such a big problem. All right. Uh, you're right. This is, this is a big big question and it, and it is commonly very undervalued as a problem as such it's not until uh, one of the one of the big problems actually does occur that people go yeah. like oh why did that happen oh security and then they try to fix it so unfortunately it's uncommon that people fix it beforehand before the problem actually occurs right uh, the real issue <clears throat> here i it sounds like he's saying that they're having security concerns from their security officer. And when too many people have too much access to their environments where they keep you know, business data or, or personal data or, or, or things like that, there's no way that that is, um, that, that is security compliant. Right. And um, you know, sometimes you have to, as a business, live up to a certain standard. And so not living up to that standard is wrong. Uh, but on the flip side of it, if you don't have access to do your job, then you can't do your job, right? Right, and and GDP, GDPR is no joke, right? And no, 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 no. it's no and, joke. You know, so like, so like, like it's great that it's great that Pablo's taking this seriously, and the and the security officer is taking this seriously. But I agree that you have a situation where you can't do your job. Like, 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 what's what's an example of can't do your job in this case? Like I understand what happens if you're not compliant, but what happens if you don't have enough access? Let's just start there for a second. Well, yeah, I mean, so um, I was working, this is, a, this is a good example. This is one that I always tell because it's such, a, such an obvious example. So uh, I was working with a client and they said, uh, we have our new hires coming in. And the first thing you, it's, it's not uncommon. It's very common that, that you start with with putting your new hires on doing security tickets or not security, um, they're doing support tickets. That's what I was yeah. gonna say. And right. so they're doing support tickets to get to know all the systems and learn all the things. And so, you know, and, and plus the the, the uh, current employees, the, the old people that have been there for a long time, they, they, they don't wanna do support tickets for, you know, for anything, right? So they give it to the new people. Um, and in this case, they needed access. These uh, people needed access to databases to a, a customer database and this they had hundreds of databases like one for every customer and so they get they grabbed they, they needed to have access to that database a production database for one customer for one ticket but they didn't have a system to set up to to give access to just one database so instead what they did was they gave access to an azure sql database server the whole server so uh, uh -huh. there were, they had like 200 databases in, in typically in one of those, and they have multiple of those in around the world as well. But so for the purpose of, of fixing one ticket, now a new hire who don't really know what they're doing yet is actually having access to 200 databases when they needed access to one. Um, and you can see how that is just dangerous in so many ways. So in retrospect, that sounds dangerous, but like, how did they get here in the first place? Like, like, like from, as far as you could tell, like, why are they in this position at all? 
Uh, yeah, and that's 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 a good point because I told you that they don't they didn't have a system to give access to the right thing. Instead, right. they just gave access. They just gave access until the person had the access they needed. But it turns out they gave too much access. So um, when you have the security responsibility and the compliance responsibility for an application, you're typically like a you know a, a product owner or somebody like that. Um, it's not always the case, but it can actually sometimes or often be that these people are maybe less technical. So mm -hmm. they don't know themselves necessarily exactly how you would give, go about giving access. And because they don't know it, they'll just say, okay, so these people are you know, saying they don't have access to do their job. I'll just grant them all kinds of access until they go away. <laughs> and, and, and also they're pretty busy people. They don't want to be Act, you know, granting access all the time. It's it's a repetitive and, and boring task and they have other things to do. So they grant all the technical people um, access to do technical things. And when the technical people go away and do their job, um, they think they have succeeded. They think that they have done the right thing. They gave access. But unfortunately, instead, there's now so many problems that instead will arise, but they don't realize that. That makes sense. Okay. So in our remaining two minutes, okay. let's just answer the last part of, of this first part of this really good question, which is how do you determine who has access to what? Can you can you reel off like super quick? Okay. So um, technically, you don't have access to production. That's the baseline. Uh, you should always use automation. Uh, to to deploy and change production and and automation is a whole different story. We're talking about people here, right? Yeah. And then what you do to battle that thing called environment drift is that you do the same for your test environments that you do for production. So you can set up new test environments automatically uh, with the same kind of automation. So you don't have access to those environments generally at all. And and for development. Uh, that's more of an open open case, really. For development environments, you're supposed to change and tinker and, and fiddle with things until you think you got it right. And then you move it to test to really verify that you did get it right. So you get more access there. Um, but you shouldn't also you know, grant full access. Um, when I say full access, I mean that there is a role in Azure which is very popular. It's called contributor. If you're a contributor in Azure, if you have that access uh, to, to an Azure subscription or somewhere, then you get access to basically everything and you can do anything and it's good because you can do your job, but then you have too much access, right? So you should be uh, worrying about um, understanding the right level of access. I'm working on the web application. Cool. You're on the web team. Here's a security group called the web team where you're going to get access to that security group and get access to the web resources only or the databases or whatever it is. Um, and final thing, before we wrap up, um, you don't want to have permanent access. You really want to have just-in-time access. Just-in-time access is a whole paradigm of itself where you, um, for example, for, for a, a, a secured environment where, where we keep sensitive business data, no one should have permanent access to those because if I do have my credentials compromised, then someone can get in and gain that access. So you want to work with what's called just-in-time access. And, and in, in Azure, there's something called privileged identity management that, man that takes care of that. Okay, so let's dig into those things in our next episode where we're going to pick this question back up and we're going to talk about just how do we fix these things. So thank you for the first half of the question answered. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you, Pablo, for, spur for spurring this discussion and the second one that's going to come later. And thank you all for watching, and we hope you'll join us for part two as part of the Azure Enablement Show. <laughs>